Well, we're finally ready to upload our site to the server and actually test it and look at it on the server itself. In order to do that, in Dreamweaver, we're going to check the data source information. We're going to create a remote host. Then we'll connect to the server and upload the site. And then we'll log into the admin and do a last couple of checks. If we get to the admin, we know we're doing OK. So let's go to Dreamweaver. The first thing we want to do is check our data source information. In Cartweaver here, it's under CW4 and then CW config, and then it's the CW config file. Whatever shopping cart application you're using, make sure you know where this file is because you may have to update it. Let's see what I'm talking about. So we'll scroll down here. Remember early on, I said, if we can use the same username and password for our database locally as we do for the host, how much of a time saver it can be, and it'll keep us from having headaches later on, here's what I was talking about. This information is the connection to our database locally. When we set up our user and our preferences or our permissions locally, if we use the same information that the host has provided us online, then we can just leave this file alone and upload everything, and it's going to work in both places. If we didn't have that information before, I'd even recommend going back to the database locally and creating a new user and then changing this again so it'll work both locally and on the server. So you don't have to try to remember to do this whenever you go back and forth. That being the case, either leave these the same, and that is the host name, the user, and the password, or change them to whatever's appropriate for the server you're uploading to. Once that's done and you save it, let's go ahead and create a connection. So we're on the site we've been working on, so just go ahead and double click on the button here. Bring up your server configuration, click on servers, and then click the plus sign so that we can add a new server. What we're going to be doing now is adding a connection to the remote host. So let's go ahead and enter a name. And this name doesn't have anything to do with security. It's just in the list what we're going to call it. So let's call it our host. So our host server. We will be connecting with FTP. Then your host should have given you FTP information.